This season of Comic Trips is brought to you by Hakes Americana and Collectibles, Tiki Tiki Board Games, and Luke and Cade's Toy Chest. Check the links in the description below for more information. sat well with us was how terrible our first episode was. It was, that was a doozy. I think it's like 11 minutes long. We go to two different places. Probably eight and a half minutes of the episode is us talking in the car. We went to Bill Bead's South Jersey comic book bonanza toy thing. And then we couldn't find any other shops in the area that were open except... Stormwatch. Stormwatch Comics. When we were in there, I mean, I could show you all the footage from Stormwatch in like a commercial break for a television show. We had no idea what we were doing. It was terrible. And we've always felt bad that we needed to give them a more... They deserved a proper webisode. But like we went there for our first live webisode that we did on Periscope. But Bob also wasn't there. But Bob wasn't there. Even though like our first webisode, you know, we only showed maybe three minutes of his store, if that. But we've developed such a relationship with Bob. Right. Like Bob came to our panel, our first panel ever at Wizard World. Yeah. And was like cheering us on. And every time we see him, it's just like, it's amazing. Like he's such a wonderful guy. And we always keep telling him, no, we have to do your store justice. And he's like, no, it's okay. Like, whatever you get to, whatever it, you it's get okay. to, we love you guys. And it's like, no, Bob, you don't understand your story is what kicked off comic trips. Yeah. So what better way to do it than season eight, free comic book day when the store is going to be mobbed. His store for variants. Every time I go there, I find like five variants of books I'm collecting that A, I didn't even know the variants existed, and B, they just, it just drains my bank account and I don't even care because I need them, I don't have them. And he always has the best selection of variants. Like, he's got boxes of variants. When you go to Free Comic Book Day, you shouldn't just go there for the free comics. You really should support your local comic book shop and actually purchase something. Because remember, the comic book shops have to buy these comics. They're giving them to you for free. For free. Bob likes to do these events right. He's got Ethan Van Skyver. He has done work on Green Lantern and a bunch of other different titles. He's going to be doing signings and sketches. It just feels good to return to the first shop that we ever went to for this show. We kind of know what we're doing now. Uh, it's, it's, 
it's debatable. We're not just going back because it's like, oh, we have to do Bob, right? Like, no. His store is the like he's just like his comic selection is hefty. He has it where he has all the boom titles. Like he's a boom affiliate where boom puts his store in the back of their books in the list for New Jersey. I think there's only three shops in New Jersey that are like boom affiliates. Mm -hmm. We all know a little bit of boom, so. I'm, I'm just, I love his store. I had no idea that you liked boom. I had no idea either. Stormwatch is not close to us. No, it's in Berlin, so we grabbed our passports. Jesus Christ. Doing that thing again? So for those that may not know about the whole Moose Pass. Grab your passport for Berlin oh. thing. Would you care to elaborate so, on where that came from? Season one, Paul took me to Berlin. And he's like, oh, we're gonna go to Berlin. And I was like, oh shit that's in Germany, we have to get our passports. First of all, Berlin is not in Germany. Berlin is its own country. Second of all, there is a town in New Jersey called Berlin. There's also a West Berlin. She actually thought it was a, a country. Not just, you know, a city in Germany. She thought it was is a country. It? Oh wait, no. Wait, what did no. I think it was? You thought it was a country. You thought it was a country in Europe, not... A city in Germany. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what it was. Or a city in Jersey. There yeah. was an actual debacle about it in the car, and I've still not quite recovered from it emotionally. Where is Berlin? Why are you asking where is Berlin? We know where Berlin is. Germany. So, Berlin... <sighs> looks massive. It is massive. Berlin, Germany. It's like towards the east side of Germany, like a little north. I bet you realize there's a witch. No, I think you have <laughs> I was God. I was not suspecting any of that. Three free comic book day books. Three. 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 How many? Three. three. Hey, On three. Have... Go. Stormwatch. Hey, three. three, two, one. Go. Yeah. Stormwatch. Yeah. Hey. I'm gonna ask if you want. To okay. Well, Let's go open the doors. Happy free comic book day, everyone. Oh, no. Woo. Happy free comic book day. Let's do this. It's exciting. Everybody gets three. You get three. You get three. I get a hug. Oh. I didn't get a movie. We're gonna be on YouTube. I feel as much as I can so put it in my don't get stuck. I don't have a lot of earlier stuff. I don't have a lot of all your hulks are in there. That trait's gonna tell you if you like it or not. And then I can pick up volume two. Or you cannot. Sure. And I can trade it in. Uh, Better way to know if you like it or not. Or a price of berries. What happened? I said they don't have extra. Yeah, they do. Look what I did. 50% off, so. I grabbed sale books too, you know. Three comics or three per person? Teeth. They got really good issues. Hold on, it didn't. 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 I'm <laughs> sorry.
Not as hard as you think. No. Really? Oh, yeah. Alright, let me do some Thank you. What is this? Yes, I do. Be careful. I believe it counts. Yeah. Really, right there, how is it? Enjoying yourself today? Enjoy myself immensely. I just love all the things that are that they have here. They have things for all the age groups. Obviously, the little kids are having fun. Adults are going through their books. And what's nice here is that they have uh, the artists signing the different books. I've been reading books now for, for decades now. And what's nice is that this is a chance for other people to really to come in and get and see what comics is really all about. And just seeing, obviously, where comics have been, where they're going, and who knows, I mean, it's just awesome. This is great, they have something for everyone, they have for the collectors, people to catch up on holes in our collection, the variants are tremendous. I mean, i never seen so many variants in, in one spot. I wish you could buy them all, but you can't. You, only, you can only get one or two, and that's it. And some of us have a budget to stick to. Uh, <laughs> we have a budget, we just never actually stick to it. <laughs> Did you find anything? Yes. <laughs> How is this all together? Yes. Join yourself today or what? I'm having a great day, man. I love people. And I love the validation I get when I see all these beautiful people coming in and enjoying comics. I really do. This was my escapism as a kid, growing up in the hard streets of Camden, New Jersey. I was what you would call an indoor kid, so that I see all these wonderful people who also enjoy the things that I love so much. Makes me feel good. What does the comic book day mean? Uh, it means an opportunity for me to get my love of comics out to people who wouldn't normally come into the store. I get to uh, expose them, as it were, to uh, things that they don't normally see. As you can tell, it really does get people in the door. And if I can just get a handful of people to start being regular subscribers, they'll spread the word, and that's how it works. It's like a virus. Thank heavens. It's a good virus. It is. It's a virus. You can't, I, I, I would love to. I don't want to cure for it. So we're back. I showered. He's a dirtbag. He didn't shower. We did some yard work. It was a, it's a productive day. Yeah. What a gorgeous day for Free Comic Book Day. Yeah. It was nice outside. It was. It was nice. We spent a few hours there. I mean, a few hours, but it was packed to the gills. We were there from when the doors opened, which was great. We actually got there a little bit before doors opened. 10 to 1, right? right. We were there 10 to 1-ish. Yeah. It was nice to get back and see Bob and Kenny and everybody at Stormwatch and just kind of reunite and hang out for the afternoon and finally do a real episode at the shop where we did our very first ever Dude, episode. Dude, they deserved it. Way overdue. They needed a beefy episode yeah. and what a perfect day. There was a ton of titles. I actually don't know the exact number, but the line into the store was just massive for people to pick up their free comic books. Bob said it perfectly. Today is the day that I can get people in the store when maybe they wouldn't normally come in. They'd come in for free comic book day and he gets to share his love and passion with the people that come in that day. Some people's hauls. 
Like this one woman had a stack of books that was like this high. Like she was going through the long boxes under the table when I was just like, I'm good. She was going in and they had their mystery boxes again, which they sold out. People grabbing them left and right. Mm -hmm. And they were on sale from $25 down to 20. It was already a good deal, but they even put them more on a discount. It was also doing fill your bag of dollar books for $25. He had older titles in there and he had newer titles in there. And if you wanted to buy them singularly, they were a dollar. Then he had 20% off everything in the stores, like statues and toys and like gaming pieces. They were 20% off. And then he had 50% off back issues, which is where he and I went a little crusty. Well, well, here, I'll show you what, first, let me just get these out of the way. Let's take a look at this. Let's just, here's our bag from Free Comic Book Day. And just so you know, we got three comics for Free Comic Book Day. No, I only got two. I thought you got three. No, the other one's a single issue, but it's not a free comic book. Oh, one. I'll just go myself in. I grabbed the I Hate Image Scotty Young. So this is, there's all, pretty much all the characters in here from the image books. Like here's Bitch Planet. Then let's see. So we got Bitch Planet. We got The Walking Dead. Are you trying to cut my lip open? No, The Walking Dead is in here. Let's see, this looks like Southern Bastards. Paper Girls. I think there's a Spawn in here. There is, there's Spawn. I like Scotty Young's interpretation of Spawn. Like that's just so cool. This isn't I Hate Fairyland number one. This is, this is just Scotty Young doing and I, it's like Gertrude facing the image universe in here. And then I grabbed Monster High. I know this is a children's book, but I really like that the characters in this are the daughters of famous monsters like Dracula's daughter. I like stuff like that and the artwork is really bright and colorful so I got it. And then I only got one other single issue um, that wasn't bagged and boarded and it's a variant of Bee and Puppy Cat number 11. I'm pretty sure I don't have this one so I grabbed it. Can we talk about Stormwatch's variants? Okay, Stormwatch has the greatest variants ever. They have variants that I had never seen before and I was just so excited to grab. Gwenpool, the Venomized variant. So this is number 13. They did a whole Venomized series for all the books that came out. Then I got a, like, this looks like a 16-bit video game variant of Gwenpool number seven. So that's kind of fun. And then I don't know who the artist is on this. But this is also Gwenpool number seven, and it's a, a variant. Then I got Silk number two. This is like the Todd McFarlane type variant. These are not variants. This is I just needed from my list. I got Deadpool Merc with a mouth number two. So it's like a Jaws ripoff almost. And then I got a variant of Bee and Puppy Cat number seven. I didn't have those variants, so. I feel like I hauled pretty hard today. You hauled. I was, just, I was pretty excited about it. There was some other variants there that I wanted, but um, variants can get a little pricey because depending on their like rarity, you know, that's a that's an expensive road to go down and I wasn't mm -hmm. about to go down that road. I had more in my hand, but I put a few back because I was like, ooh, budgeting. Ooh, no, no, no. You know when you like, you, you want to go get something and then you put it back and you're like, no, I'll see it again. And then you have like remorse that you didn't go back and get it. I know the feeling all too well. Currently. Paul went a little crazy. Ah, I went a little crazy. I so he was filming at one corner of the store, and then I found the H's for the back issues, and it was like all these Incredible Hulks. So I literally texted him, come here. And I saw him like peeking over the crowds looking for me, and I was like, come over here. I didn't end up getting too many Incredible Hulks simply like because my catalog list only went up to a certain amount. However, that kind of pushed me over the precipice into moving into other areas and falling deep down. We got one issue of The Incredible Hulk, number 299. That has a $5 sticker on it, paid 50% off. All of these were 50% off. Let's just go through the different uh, titles that I have here. Oh, I shouldn't be eating all that brownie batter. I don't ever want to hear you say anything so terrible ever again. Do you guys just like buy boxes of like cake or brownie mix? with no intention on making it and you just eat the raw batter, but you just don't put the eggs in. I'm completing some different runs now. I'm trying to complete Invaders. I grabbed number 26 
from 1977, number 40 from 1979, number 37 from 1978, three issues of The Invaders, $5, $10, and $10 issues respectively, 50% off. The Defenders are back in pop culture. There is a show out on Netflix. Every franchise is getting a show now, it seems. Yes. There's also, like how there's the Gwenemized, mm -hmm. or the Venomized covers. One month or something did Defenders covers. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Like That's recently. Cool. That's cool. Sorry, I'm actually adding to the conversation. Good, I appreciate it. The original Defenders run grabbed number 38, number 55, number 68, number 87, and then number 88. These all have stickers on them between $3, $3, $4, $3, and $6. They were all also 50% off. Do you think if I enter this win the Toys R Us shopping spree that it's still valid? I doubt it, but- It's three... a $5,000 or $3,000 shopping spree at Toys R Us. In 1980. Went and grabbed one of the newer issues of Back to the Future, number 18, still collecting that. Oh, it's just gonna be a four issue series. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic Four was able to cross off another old issue. Number 103, $20 sticker on it, ended up being 10 bucks. That's not bad for older Fantastic Four. No complaints there. Avengers, good old Avengers. He had a great selection of Avengers books in the high 100s, low 200s numbers. So number 212, 222, 224, 225, 229, 230, 237, and 238. Was able to grab a bunch, a nice little run of ones that I needed. I think there's one or two in here that I already had. However, since I got such a good deal on them, I'm just going to end up putting them in our charity beans. I do not know why I am talking like that. I think I am having a stroke. Like, I think he takes pride in the fact that his books aren't trashy books. Which is awesome. Which makes me happy because I'll gladly pay a higher price sticker for a higher grade book. Oh, absolutely. And it's funny too because you'll go to shows or you'll go to shops and you'll see, you know, if they have, say, an Avengers number 200 in decent shape, it's $5. An Avengers 200 in better shape, it's $12. An Avengers 200 in incredible shape, it's like $25. Yeah. Obviously, condition is everything. If you've ever collected comics, you know that conditioning is everything. Older back issues, you know, it's kind of okay to just start with an issue that's not in too incredible condition. If you can get a good deal on it and then maybe later down the line you trade up mm -hmm. which I've done a couple times something that I've kind of put off for a while in collecting and I've been it's been it's been been tugging at me a little bit for a long time and I tried to stay away and I've stayed away for as long as I can but I can no longer stay away I've officially fallen back down the detective comics hole Ay, caramba. I tried and you failed. I have failed. A few people have made comments that it seems like we pretty much only cover Marvel stuff I can obviously this, see this is boom this is boom. I can obviously see that because most of the comic books that I collect are Marvel with the exception of like Suicide Squad and some Justice League of America. I was able to grab Detective Comics number 500, Detective Comics number 600, Detective Comics number 662. Got that right. Detective Comics number 663. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Detective Comics number 665. Detective Comics number 666. You're such a badass. I've done everything I can since we started this to not fall down this rabbit hole because there are so many issues. One of the first things that really ever spoke to me within like the comic book world besides the X-Men animated series was Michael Keaton's Batman and Batman the Animated Series. Those came out, Michael Keaton's Batman came out when I was like six or seven. Batman the Animated Series came out when I was like nine and I loved them. I love the animated series. Same thing with the Uncanny X-Men cartoon series. I wasn't aware that there were like comic books of this stuff when I was a kid. I was six years old, seven, eight years old. I started collecting comic books just before my 10th birthday and I'm kind of glad I didn't know about them sooner because I would have spent all my allowance. If you followed this show over the past two years, you've seen how many issues of Avengers and X-Men and Fantastic Four and Incredible Hulk that I've gotten. It's starting to get to the point where those are getting few and far between now because the issues that I don't have are the big ticket issues and we're kind of more about budgeting. Yeah, but we can always like, like let's say there's a book you don't, you are okay with getting rid of we could always trade up for a bigger ticket book with you know a couple books that were not necessarily like 
collecting. You know what I mean? We can, but that would kind of give me hives, having to get rid of books, you know, if it would take away a number from, say, oh, 100 through 110. Here, I'm just gonna give you 105. Today was an awesome day. The shop was packed. We left at one, but I can only imagine that the door just kept opening throughout the entire day. He just had so many good sales going on that it was like, man, we need to go here. We need to pick some stuff up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was excited to grab my free comic book day book. As soon as I saw the sale on the back issues and the variants, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Free comic book day is awesome. What's more awesomer -er, er is when the store for free comic book day also has a sale coinciding. It's more exciting when you walk in the door. It, it allows people that may or may not necessarily be massive comic book fans and collectors to possibly jump into something, to patronize the store, to purchase something where they might not necessarily purchase it. When I was standing up front by Bob and he was dealing with some customers, someone walked in and said, oh, what's going on in here? There's a line outside. And he's like, oh, free comic book day. And he's like, wow, free comic books? He's like, yeah, come on. He's like, all right, cool. I've never been here before. The kid didn't know what was going on. It didn't seem like he was maybe that much into comics, but that could have ended up being a potential customer right there. I think I saw him grabbing a couple other books besides the free ones, which is awesome because that means you converted someone into a customer now. Bob's store, regardless of free comic book day or not, is getting a giant thumbs up. His store is awesome. He has so much stuff in there from the variants to the back issues to the new books. He's got tons of awesome statues. He's got a ton of living dead dolls, which I know I love. He has a little bit for everyone there. He has an entire like wall of graphic novels and hardcovers. There's just stuff everywhere to look at or get excited over. So I mean, Bob, your store is getting a giant thumbs up. We love you. Thank you for always being so supportive of, of us. Like I said, our first panel ever, I looked down in the audience and I saw Bob sitting there and it's like, Dude, you're the best. Like, yeah. he's the greatest. I feel happy shopping at his store because I know that I'm giving my money to just an awesome human being. Absolutely. If you're interested, we did an unboxing of their mystery box, what, about a year ago or so? Um, Give yeah. or take. We will leave a link for that in the description below if you'd like to see. It was when they first started doing it. We personally enjoyed it, and apparently it's going over very well. Dude, the value, though, like, cause yeah. we spent $25 on it. Correct. But, like, we estimated that we got about $50 worth of stuff in it. I always look forward to Free Comic Book Day because I always feel like there's something out there that I wouldn't normally pick up. Like, I wouldn't have normally picked up Monster High, but it was free, and it's like, oh, here's an excuse to read it, see if I like it, because this is number zero, and so I'm assuming that this is gonna become a series soon by Titan Comics, so, I mean, if I love it, then I know I can add that to my pull list. All right, let's wrap it up. I'll wrap you up. Better wrap me up in something gluten-free. If you liked this video, if you like us, give us a giant thumbs up like the video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting us. If there was something in the webisode that you want to give feedback on or you want to tell us your favorite part of the webisode, sound off in the comment section below. We love listening to you guys' comments. Also, show this video to your pets because I know pets watch comic strips. Proven. Proven. Show, I get weekly us. tweets about people's pets watching comic strips on their televisions. Autobots, roll out. Do it. Gonna make dinner. Yeah. Dinner! Dinner! I'm gonna get some dinner and you're gonna cook it for me. Gonna cook me some dinner. You're gonna wear a little, like, little apron? L little apron? Yeah, but only the apron. He knows what's up. Little apron. Go cook me some dinner in an apron. Yep. No? 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 Okay. No? It's just you always do it and I'm so unexpecting that you're gonna do it and I'm like right about to say something. Careful, Stuart's sleeping. You should have woken him up. Sleep stop! Look, look, now look what you did.